Hi everyone, Jessica here from Paper Ink Stamp and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're taking another look at the We Are Memory Keepers uh, gift bag punch board and I have a full tutorial video here on my YouTube channel which will show you how to create the three different sizes using the instructions on the board. But one of the questions I got asked was whether you could create a bigger bag, sort of more custom to something um, that you want to put in it. So I'm going to be creating a bag today that's going to fit this frame. So this frame measures roughly nine by nine inches. And for that, I'm going to be using two pieces of cardstock. These are both 12 by 12 inch, and I don't need to cut any of this down. This will fit this frame perfectly. So depending on the size bag that you are creating, that's going to determine kind of the size and how many pieces of cardstock you are going to need. For what I'm doing here, I need two pieces. Each piece is going to have a side panel, a front panel and a tab as well to, of course, connect the two pieces together. Uh, so for this, you're going to need your um, punch board. You're going to need some form of scoring uh, tool as well, because we're going to do additional lines, you know, that we're not going to use the uh, punch board for. So so the first thing I'm going to do is create my tab which will connect the two pieces of cardstock together. So from the right hand side I'm going to uh, just do a little pencil mark at one quarter of an inch in. Then I'm going to pull out, so I'm using my crafter's companion guillotine because it's got a scoreboard already kind of built into it and this is then going to fit my 12 by 12 cardstock. So then what I'm going to do is score along that quarter of an inch uh, mark that I've created from top to bottom and that is going to be our fold. Then we can bring this over to our punch board and get started on that. If you haven't watched my previous video on how to use this punch board I definitely recommend doing that uh, before kind of creating um, bigger bags. So the first thing I'm going to do is butt up that left hand side with the start line. I'm going to punch which is going to take off a notch uh, for the base of our bag and I'm going to score down the side which is going to create um, the width of the bag. I'm going to score along the triangle so we've got the two triangle pieces and then that center piece as well. My cardstock is bigger, uh, of course, than this board. So I'm going to go back to my guillotine, um, to my bigger scoreboard, and then I can um, take those score marks from top to bottom. The next thing I'm going to do is the uh, mark that I did for the side. I'm going to bring the side along with the start line and I'm going to uh, do another notch and that is going to create that um, little piece for the base of my bag. Again, go back to my first video um, to know exactly how to use this punch board. Then the tab that I created, that quarter of an inch tab, that score line, I'm going to go over to the start line as well. I'm going to line that up and then punch again. So you can see from the back here, now along the left, you've got that quarter of an inch tab with that uh, bit for the base. We have got then our side panel, which you can see I'm just reinforcing um, those score marks and adding them right to the end. Then I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to line up the, so right where my finger is now, so that bottom little notch bit, I'm going to line that up with a uh, line as well and that is going to create the fold for our base. So hopefully that has made sense to you. The only thing that we've done is created our own tab here um, and just moved it um, along. So like I said, for me, I need to have two pieces exactly the same. So I've already done my second piece here. I The only thing I forgot to do was add that um, bottom score line in here. There is an extra score line you can add in at this point, and I would recommend it at this point. But I am going to talk about that a little bit later on in the video. So I will kind of reference back to this point here. So now I've got all of my scores, I can go ahead and burnish this. So again, just to go over that uh, again, so I created my own tab, this is a quarter of an inch, you can see I'm burnishing it here. And then using the board, I then put in that side panel. So this isn't going to give you um, the thickness of the bag, isn't going to be any thicker, but the width of the bag is. Now, this worked out perfectly because it was the right width for my bag um, anyway, but I haven't had a go yet creating like a thicker bag. I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to on this board, but again, it's not something that I have looked at just yet. Uh, so I've put the side panel in, I've put uh, taken the notches out of the bottom that I needed to and I've created my tab and you can see that here how this is going to look and again I'm just going to burnish both of these on both of these pieces of cardstock. 
The punch board will punch the holes that you need for your ribbon, but it punches it from the front and the sides. But I really only wanted to have it uh, on the front and the back of the bag, not through the sides. So I just took this punch. I picked this up from the range. I think it was like a pound 50, something like that. And it just punches a single hole. Um, and I'm gonna use this to um, put in my holes. So I needed to measure uh, where I wanted my holes to go. Um, but as it turned out, sort of looking at the finished bag, they definitely do not line up. Um, but I came, I was planning to kind of come in roughly, I think it was two and a half inches from um, the sides, but I think I measured one of the sides um, wrong. So you want to just take a little bit of time if you're going to do this by hand just to make sure that you are um punching to me it really depends if you want it to be that perfect obviously this is handmade so it doesn't have to be that perfect but if you want to just take a little bit of time to make sure that you are punching them um in the right places alternatively obviously you don't have to you can absolutely use that punch board as well so now i've marked uh, where I want to punch these holes. I'm going to put the pieces of um, two pieces of paper together. So I'm going to punch through both of these at the same time because my, my thought process was they will be in the same position. Uh, so I'm just going to punch through both of these and then we have our holes ready to go uh, for our ribbon, which we're going to do sort of nearer um, the end of this. So now we've got those in as well, we can now just go ahead and start bringing this bag together and that is super, super easy to do. So for gluing your bag together, it really depends what you're using it for, how much weight you're kind of putting in this. If you're just creating a bag, then you can use glue or tape runner um, or just normal double-sided tape. If you want something that is going to last, it's gonna stay together, the best thing you could use is red liner tape. This is a super, super strong um, double-sided tape, very, very sticky, and this, this is gonna give you the best adhesion possible. So I'm using some here, so for some unknown reason i think this is probably um about an inch thick maybe half an inch thick i'm not it's probably half an inch thick this one and instead of getting a different tape i just decided to cut it in half to use on both uh, pieces i would just get a tape that's gonna you know fit perfectly um within your uh, gap so for this is my tab you can see i had some uh, just hanging over here so i'm just going ahead and uh, trimming that down um so you want to make sure that you don't go over your score line so make sure you know you're within um just that tab area because you don't end up with um anything sticky sort of outside of that tab section then you want to make sure that it's adhered down really nicely you could just rub over it with um like a bone fold or something like that but make sure it's really well stuck down the most important thing when sticking this down is you want to make sure your base is going to line up perfectly. Don't worry about the top because you could trim that. Make sure you get this bottom lined up, otherwise it's not going to sit properly. And what I did is I took just um, a portion of that release paper off at a time and I made sure that I was lining up nicely. Again, making sure to uh, try and get um, no overhang. You want it to be on there sort of as perfect as you can so it does sit square. Then what you can do is fold it kind of in on itself like you're folding it down. This would be the easiest way to make sure that you are getting this nice and square. Again, I'm making sure that my um, base is going to line up with each other and then I'm just folding over that other uh, side piece again because you can trim the top down if it doesn't quite match. Fold it back on itself, use your bone folder to really reinforce um, those creases and things and you have kind of your, your bag together. You can see this is nice and um, boxy and this is going to fit my photo frame perfectly. Then we want to uh, adhere the base of this. So what I've done is uh, I'm just going to put some glue on these uh, smaller tabs, not going right up to the uh, the outer edge because it's not going to um, have anything there. I've put a little bit what's going to be the top flap um, just along the uh, edge of that. And I'm just going to kind of fold it down on itself, turn it over. I'm going to put my photo frame in here just to uh, try and get that base nice and stuck 
stuck together again you could use liner tape here um i did just decide to use my nouveau glue uh, and just pop in a ruler in here as well just anything that is going to um help that adhere down together so that is our basic bag all finished you've got those sides there it's going to come together if you want it to uh, and it just yeah it's going to fit your, my gift absolutely perfectly now this is the portion where I said um, that you could do an extra uh, step back at the beginning before you'd even considered putting your bag together. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it now because my cardstock is quite thick. It really needed those um, those definitive score marks but regular bags that you can buy from the shop pre-made bags do come folded down now if you don't add a score line here um it will stay up you know forever but if you want to create a bunch of gift bags maybe to sell or just have on hand add a score line along the back large piece and down the sides as well not on the front piece and if you do that it will mean that you can lie this flat so hopefully um i can create sort of another video you might find other videos on youtube here already kind of talking about that that was a step that i was meaning to do and to be honest i completely forgot about it you've seen i just folded it back on itself managed to fold it up i burnished it down with my bone folder and it worked just as well um but it will work even better and it will give you a better finish if you do score it at the time when you're doing all your other score lines. So again, you need to just add a score and it can be as high as you want it to be, you know, up your bag, but only score the back and then the sides as well. And that will allow you to fold that back upon itself. And again, it just means that you can keep them flat packed if you wanted to. Other people, you know, if you're gifting it, they can keep it. And it's not like it has to just stand up uh, all of the time. So on to the next bit, I'm adding in my handle. So I've just got some ribbon here. If you've got other um, other ribbons, you might have some fabric, you might have chains and things, you know, whatever that looks like. Uh, you can add actual hardware into this if you wanted to, um, but I am just using ribbon. So I was just a little bit off camera there. It was because I was trying to get my knot thick enough. I didn't know how many times I needed to knot it, where then it didn't um, come back through that hole. So just be wary of that. Um, you know, there might be different ways of securing your handles uh, to make sure that they don't come back through those holes. So with this particular ribbon, um, it only it, I had to tie it upon itself three times to make a big enough knot where it wouldn't come through. And I made sure then that my ribbon, because this is like a satin ribbon on one side I made sure that that satin was on the outside and that the um, kind of finish was as good as I could possibly make it so again just spending a little bit of time doing these things will just give uh, your projects your bags whatever it is uh, just a little bit of a nicer finish and that's the basic bag finished. So, um, you know, you can create bigger bags using this punch board. Um, and that is basically creating it, putting your handles in. And then if you want to add that fold down section in there, that's basically all you need to do. It was really, really simple um, to put that together. But I thought I would just decorate it now. So I'm going to be adding some, um, one of these panels and some flowers and a little tag to it as well. I have got quite busy patterned paper. If I thought that I was adding any of this maybe I would have picked something a little less busy but I do really love how this uh, turned out so this paper pack I think it's craft sensations um I've had this for ages I think I got it from the works or the range I'm not 100% sure and it comes with all this beautiful patterned paper and you get a few of these uh, toppers as well so uh, this one I've picked says have a nice day because I don't know what I'm going to be using it yet for so I want it to be a little bit more uh, generic but just to elevate them a little bit, you can then decorate these up nicely. There's a lot of white space on here, so I knew that I was going to add uh, some flowers around this. So I've trimmed it down. It did have a little bit of a border on it, but I've trimmed it down now uh, to have a smaller purple border. And then I wanted to add a uh, another matte layer in there that had a little bit of foiling. So within this pack, some of the papers have this beautiful pink purple foiling on there. So I'm just going to create a simple matte and layer for that. Uh, I'm just going to add this together just with glue because again those flowers are going to have a little bit of dimension uh, on there so just using a little bit of my Nouveau glue here to attach them together and pop them on. 
Um, I do wish I'd use a little bit of a less, um, you know, I'm looking at my bag now. I do wish I used a little bit less of a busy uh, paper because the flowers I created, I actually do really, really love them. So I've put this on the front. So the front being where I don't now have that score line to fold this uh, down. Um, and the uh, dies that I'm going to be using for the flowers, these are the Creative Expressions Stitched Blooms. Um, so you've got lots of flowers in here. Um, and I'm going to die cut them basically from lots of different... Uh, that there is me realizing that my um, ribbon, my holes don't actually match together because I thought, well, that looks quite off. But again, I wasn't really too worried about it. But I'm going to be die cutting um, uh, a bunch of these from different colored cardstock. I'm trying to think how many I ended up. I, I had um, three different sized flowers. Then I did one of the large circle centers. And then I punched a bunch of gold centers as well for all of the flowers. So I'm just going through different cardstock. Um, I'm trying to think I got the Arctic blue. I used the um, sugared lilac, the uh, amethyst purple. I used the pumpkin orange, fuchsia pink. Um, I use the navy blue cardstock, um, and I can't think of any others. And then I had the green, so I had the fern green and the spearmint green as well for some leaves. So you can see I'm just die cutting it now, working my way through, and here are my piles of them. So I believe I had eight possibly of each, and then for those, um, gold circles uh, I just used that same punch there was a small die in there I could have used but to be honest for how many I needed it was really going to take me too long to punch one at a time so I just used a piece of scrap cardstock in a gold mirror card uh, and yeah just use that punch for this so you'll probably definitely see that uh, more in more videos and then I'm going to take this ball tool. Now, I'm pretty sure this came with the board that came with one of the issues of Paper Craft Essentials. Um, so, and I've just then got this kind of... Uh, um, foam pad here and I'm just using it to create a little bit of uh, shape on these bigger flowers. So I, I was doing one at a time and then I decided just to kind of batch um, do it. So you can see I'm laying out all of these uh, circles here and I'm going to put a blob of glue in the middle and then I'm going to add those uh, gold smaller circles just using my embellishment wand. And I kind of work my way down this to get this all together. So those big flowers you can see are going to have the um, bigger circle with the, the small gold circle. Then we've got the um, middle size flower is going to have the circle and be shaped as well and then I've got those smaller flowers which is just going to have the circle and they are going to uh, just lie flat so I'm going to work all my way through these and then we can start arranging them uh, on this bag front so here you can see them all made. I am actually thinking about just doing a bunch of die cutting with my scraps um, and just having a pile of these sort of ready to go. Um, Cause I never know 100% when I'm gonna use them unless I've got like a specific uh, product project in mind. Um, but I probably should just die cut some of these um, to have them ready. So I've zoomed out a little bit just so you can see the whole bag and kind of um, see exactly what we're doing. So I wanna make this quite even so as even as possible um, and my main focus is to try and cover some of that uh, white gap and I end up using all of these there's loads and loads of flowers uh, on this but you know if I'm going through all this effort to create all of this why not just throw it all on there um, when I come to glue it, so it won't be exactly the same when I do come to glue these down because I am just sort of working on a little bit of an arrangement um, I end up using them to be um, uh, having both corners to be uh, symmetrical so they're both exactly the same so I made sure that um, you know moved the colors around and things but um, yeah had all of the flowers sort of working together in that same uh, same way so I'm going to get those stuck down and then I did decide just for one little finishing touch to create a tag to hang it really doesn't need it but again I thought let's just go all out so they had some smaller um pe like panels within the paper pad I just die cut that with one of the sizes of my tags from the creative craft products the um like super size nestables for the tags I just die cut that um you know left a lot of that white area again punched it with that punching tool 
and just put some uh, light, some like neutral twine through it. So what I could have done, um, again, if I knew I was going to put a tag on it, I could go ahead and do that before I attach my handles. Um, but I just then tied this in a bow around that handle and can just let it hang. So I'm probably not going to write on it because if I gifted it to somebody, then they would be able to write that if they wanted to pass it on, which is absolutely fine. And that is basically this bag finished. Again, hopefully the beginning bit was a good tutorial for you guys to see that you can create different size bags uh, using this punch board. It doesn't have to just be the small, medium and large um, that they have the instructions for. Like I said, you might need to do just a little bit of measuring to kind of work out exactly the size you need um, to see what size cardstock you need and things like that. But once you've worked that out and you've done it once, it's pretty easy to just work out how to do it for um you know other other gifts and things so this definitely isn't going to be the last bag that I create but I'm actually super happy with how this has come out and I can't wait to gift it to somebody so I will link to my full tutorial using the punch board as well so you guys can see that if you did like this video then please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please do so so you don't miss out on any future videos and if I can find a link to this gift bag punch board uh, then I will again leave that in the description box down below so that's it for today thanks very much for watching and happy crafting